state testing. Testing! <laughs> Please work. Please work. Yeah, no, for real. Yeah. Have you ever looked at how much sugar is in this? Yeah, I try not to. That's why I drink it out of the can and not in a cup. I'm kind of disgusted. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> I think the honey pot is just really good on my throat. Mm. Because you're sick. You're not sick. Gross. <clears throat> Lion, bro. <laughs> Can you switch me her letters, please? Sure. Thanks. Anytime. <coughs> hey. You can't even see it. I'm going to punch her in the face. You couldn't even see it. <laughs> All right, you ready? What's happening with my part? I don't know. Just... She automatically parts. Yep. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. That's it. You had to grab it in now. Okay. One side's blonder than the other. You gonna make it? Look, this side is blonder than this side. Well, you start school in a couple of weeks, so no. Well, be I fixed. really want to fix it before I go to school. I think fixing it at the school is perfect because then they get to learn how to fix stuff. You know, like gummy hair. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really fucked up. <laughs> oh my god, mom. Yeah, I know. I was looking at that the other day. Stop. I How does that happen? It's just because it's been going like all summer. You should probably clean that, yeah? Yeah. Before you get sick. Yeah. I mean, it's just dust. That's how you get sick. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Hey everybody, welcome to a Smile Girl, Don't Be Nervous. Hi. <laughs> um, as you know by now, or if you're new to our show, yay. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> I'm Wanda and I'm the mom. I'm Esperanza and I'm the daughter. And oh, we are Smile Girl, Don't Be Nervous. We um, originally had a speaker um, scheduled for today and that is Shauna. Um, but, uh, we totally recorded this whole episode before, and, um... We fucked up. And it, it wasn't really us. Like, there was something going on. I don't know what was going on, but, like, two minutes into the recording, and it was, like, an hour and 30 minutes, like, it just started, like, screeching. Um, my bestie is like, that's because you are under attack, and I see, she totally is convinced that it is because of the subject that we were talking about, so... The subject is a little bit... Yeah, it's, it's rough. pretty intense, it's pretty intense, and I think with everything going on in the world that it, um, there are some forces at play, that is for sure. Um, so, um, we have two... Um, articles uh, that we will be covering today. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, we have in an, an actual news article, like from a newspaper, um, that goes along with the study that we're doing. You skipped like half of this. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just winging it. Okay, I'm just going it as it comes, <laughs> and then I'll go back. <laughs> I feel like this is important. So, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so this podcast is for people who want to learn, so remember to like, share, and hit the bell to subscribe to receive notifications when we do post new videos. There is one posted every week, um, except for, um, around specific holidays, like our Halloween one. Um, going to be released on Halloween. It's going to be released on Halloween, but then you get another one after that. But to hold you over, we will have some TikToks coming. Um, so. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> super excited. Yeah. We got some things coming down the pipeline. <laughs> so, um, and hopefully this will be my last episode recording with these glasses. As much as I love these glasses, I absolutely hate the glare. Yeah. Um, working on getting contacts. I have an eye appointment scheduled, so it's on the Oh, list. I need to do that. Yes. Yes, yes. I just have enough. Um, so shout out to all the holidays and events coming up this week. 
We've got um, Samhain is the evening of Halloween to November 1st. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is November 2nd. Uh, Daylight Savings Time ends on November 5th. So those of you that adhere to Daylight Savings Time, you will get an extra hour of sleep mm -hmm. this weekend. But that means that it's cold. Ooh. Yeah, it, yeah. It's currently snowing. It's currently snowing. Today is our first day. We oh, it stopped snowing, on. though. It has been snowing all day, though. Yeah. Luckily, it hasn't collected, but it's just well, enough it's to make the ice just, or to make the roads just a little bit slippery. So I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, like you have to all. leave early in the morning, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and also, more importantly, more than anything, um, election day is November 7th. So, no matter how you decide to vote, um, please do. Is there voting this year? We are American. Yes, today. It's, it's like election year. Like, big deal. Oh, yeah, no, it's 2024 like, coming yeah. up. Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is a big deal. So no matter what your political views are, can you imagine we've been um, back for four years? We, I know. I just thought about that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's crazy. We've yeah. been back for four years. I'm we've not talking myself. I promise. Uh, My best friend's over in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have been um, here from Seattle for four uh, years. For four years, yeah. Because we moved back the weekend after the election. Yep. <laughs> we were like, we gotta, we gotta go. We yep. gotta go. Just wanna be home. Um, so trigger warnings and advisories, um, this is a very, very, very deep um, podcast today um, episode. Uh, we'll be talking about some serious, serious, serious um, subjects. Um, today it's going to be suicide, prostitution, child trafficking, sex work, and rape. So um, please do what you need to for self-care for this episode. Um, you know, pause, come back. If you need to disclose, please find an adult, not a child, in order to help you through these um, uh, situations that you may be going through or know of anybody going through. So um, please, please do what you can in order to take self care. Pause, come back. Um, we will be putting the links to the articles um, in the show notes as always. As always, I say it every single episode. Um, please go read the studies themselves. Um, this is an easier study to read because it reads more of a, as a story mm -hmm. as opposed to all the psychological jargon that generally comes with like uh, peer-reviewed psychological articles and stuff. So please, please, please um, uh, do yourself a favor and read everything that uh, we post and just don't take our word for it because that's not, that's not the responsible thing to do. So we're just here to bring some light to some issues and that's what we, we would like you to do. Uh, for our disclaimers, our thoughts are not the views of the author and are in no way affiliated with the books or the authors or any of the publishing companies of the books that we talk about. And um, to start off, we will be talking about, uh, we will be starting, I'm sorry, in book one of The House of Night called Mart. This is our last quote from Mart. Um, no, 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 no I think more. we have one more. One, or two, one more? Yeah, one more, I think. Okay. Yeah, we have one more. So then we'll be done with Mart and then we'll move on to... Betrayed. 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 Yep. So this particular quote is on page 260. Um, and Nefra is the one that is talking. And she says, And second, I want you to live as you would be remembered if you would die tomorrow, because you might. Then if you do die, your spirit can rest peacefully knowing that you leave behind an honorable memory. If you do not die, then you will have set the foundation for a long life rich with integrity. So a little bit of context about where this quote is coming from. Um, Elliot, who is that kid that everybody detests in their class, um, he sits in the background, he falls asleep during class, he only wakes up to do passing period, he's rude and disrespectful to everybody, he doesn't do self-care at all, so he kind of smells, and he's just, he's just a douche. Like, all of that would be okay if he wasn't a douche, but he's just a douche in general. So he dies <laughs> um, while in class. Um, his body rejects the change. Um, that's kind of how, uh, when you're marked, there's no guarantee that you're going to make it to be a full-fledged adult vampire. So um, your body still has to make it through the change. Um, and his body rejects the change. They are in Professor... Pantelicia's class, um, and he dies, like, literally in front of the whole class. Um, Just, like, falls over and croaks? Well, so they, like, cough themselves to death of blood, and so they just, like, like, choke on their blood to Like, die. almost, like, 
like they're drowning. Yeah, drowning because yeah. it's in their lungs. Yeah. I mm-hmm. couldn't think of the word drowning. Sorry. Yeah. So Nefera has like this gift where she is able to, and this is super important to know in the future books, but she has this power to be able to give people that are dying or beings that are dying because she does it later on uh, with a cat and that gets explained later but um she gives peace to those that are dying so she'll literally like hold you and you just like feel at peace as you're passing away. as you're passing away right and it's just calm and stuff and so that's what she that's does cool. that is really cool but she she absorbs powers from that yeah i was gonna say and it, it, that'd be really like mentally fun um well she kind of uses it in a bad way so i'm not gonna do a spoiler alert for that one because we do talk about that one later um but yeah that's that's super important to know so He's passed away, um, and um, the whole class is, you know, distraught, even though he's a douche. Um, he, he died, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. in front of them. So, you know, obviously they're distraught. And this is what she says um, after she has calmed him enough to pass away. So, um, the article that we are going to go over is called A More Miserable Life Than Living in the Jungle, a Japanese comfort woman story. And it's by a name I'm told totally gonna butcher and I'm not even gonna try but um the author's name and the link to the article um are all in the show notes I said before um the other article we will be reading um is called Wyoming man was sex trafficked several times as a boy by family to pay debts sadly not usual and that was out of the Cowboy State Daily and that link is also found in the show notes um so of course with every every study we have um we gotta start with some definitions Mm -hmm. (laughs) so The first one is called integrity. Um, So integrity has two different definitions in the dictionary. The first one is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, right? So Mm -hmm. doing the right thing, you know, like being a good person. Yeah. Right? Okay, so that's the first one. Um, And that makes sense. So when we think about integrity, that's generally what we go to, right? Um, and then the second definition is the state of being whole and undivided. Okay, so that generally goes to like um, when engineers talk about like the integrity of the structure or the integrity of the building. Right. Um, that means like it's whole, it's complete. You know, it's it's stable. It's not going anywhere. Right. Right. Like it's okay. Um, where Legos, not popsicle sticks. Right. Yeah. Like like it's it's set. Okay. So those are the two definitions of integrity. So um, I know you you were talking about a quote from Taekwondo um, that talked about integrity when we were going over this originally, like, forever oh ago. <laughs> yeah, no, um, so I know, like, in t- when I was, God, how old I, I was, like, eight or nine. Oh, man. Okay, so I was in paralegal school, so that was, I don't know, about two years after we got here. Yeah. No, like a year after we got here. So yeah. I was working for the state. So I was like eight or nine. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> me and my brother were in, me and Anthony were in Taekwondo and together. And every check-in and check-out when we, and then the class would start and end, we had to say this big, long, like, saying. And I remember one of the, there was like ten rules. And one of them was in tragedy. And one of them, like, really stuck with me. Uh, that was like the main one that stuck with me. <clears throat> I also know, like in Summit, there was a saying over the gym that said, um, "Do the right thing even when no one is watching." Right. That was because your your grade school was a lighthouse school. Yep. Um, and so your school had integrated into your curriculum the seven habits of highly effective people, or yeah, something like something that. like that. Yeah, by Stephen Covey. Yep. The um, fact that you remember that, I'm really impressed. I, it's on my to-do reading list. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, that was really ingrained in, like, the things that you guys were doing in the yeah. school. Like, you guys even got, like, little tickets and stuff for yeah. it. And I remember, like, I was on, like, a behavior plan mm-hmm. at that point, too. And, like, because for I was, talking. Yeah, well. Crazy, the, right? <laughs> well, because I was also, like, I had just got in trouble for, I was in ISS, and then I got put on my behavior plan, mm-hmm. and so my talking was out of control, my attitude was out of control, and mm-hmm. I was just mad. Mm-hmm. I was just mad. 
Um, and like, so I know I'd lose points for not being proactive. Back talking. Back talking. Respect. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the main, like the main ones that I do remember was put first things first, which I'm still not great at. <laughs> it's a struggle. Um, and <laughs> be proactive. I don't remember the other ones. I don't remember either. I know, like, think one of them was like something with a saw. I don't remember. Sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. And that one's like the saw. And that one's like act like doing activities like exercising and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I don't remember any other ones. Mm-mm. And that's okay. <laughs> I need to, like, get back on those. Yeah. I think that really helped you guys yeah. really focus on, like, your behaviors and what you were doing yeah. and stuff. And it helped, like, me become a better person. Mm-hmm. Because I know, like, when we moved back here, like, I was just mad as fuck. Mm-hmm. And then, like, those, like... There was a lot going on, though. Yeah. And, but, like... <laughs> in your defense. <laughs> yeah. And then, um... And we talked about that in past episodes. Yeah. So, go back. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But I do need to get back to those. Yeah. Yeah. Some idea. Write a note. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll definitely write them on my mirror in the bathroom. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, so, um, if we look at this quote from being honest and having strong moral principles, like, I find it ironic that Neferet is the one that's saying, that's yeah. saying these things, considering the things that she's hiding. Can I have some more tea? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bust out. She fussed up my Mickey and Minnie Thanks. cup. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I find it ironic that um, Nefra is the one that's saying this because, spoiler alert, going into further books, <clears throat> um, Nefra is uh, dealing with darkness. Um, I mean, like, literal darkness. Um, she is meeting with the White Bull, um, and I think I've, I've described the White Bull in previous episodes. Um, I'm trying to remember what episode it was. Um, I don't know. And the, I think it was the Not Everything Equates to Light. Light and Not light. Everything Equals Darkness. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so I think that's episode five. I think it's four or five. Okay, yep. Yeah. So um, go check that episode out if you want to know what the White Bull looks like. Um, so... She is literally trafficking with darkness, and she is having sexual relations with darkness, and I mean, like, whole night, like, raises Kelowna from the dead so that she can have more power. She's trying to turn herself into the Sai, the sai Skilly. Do you want to link arms? Um, sure. Let's be close. <laughs> Um, so, um, she's doing some shady shit, right? And so, she's trying to talk about uh, living with integrity. So, I find that real ironic, um, that that's, that's really happening. Also, from the second definition of being whole and undivided, um, uh, once again, like, Neferet is the one saying this, and she is truly a broken, broken girl. Um, so, going into, uh, Neferet's Curse, which is one of the novellas in, um, the House of Night series, um, spoiler alert, um, she absolutely hates humans, um, hates male humans in particular. I know, like, but she's also had a past with, like, male humans. Right, so... And I mean, like, after that kind of past, like, I would hate humans too. No, well, I don't know, I don't and know I, I would necessarily say hates humans, but I would understand that she would hate that kind of guy. You know, both guys. <laughs> Boys are just stupid. Well, we don't generalize here. No, and that's not... why I'm saying boys and not men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zero out of five stars, right? Yeah. Um, no kidding. So she, um, her her story is, is and once again, spoiler alert for Neferet's Curse, um, she... Her mother died uh, when she was a teenager, like way back in like the late 1800s. Um, her mother dies, and so her daughter has to be the woman of the house. And her dad treats her as the woman of the house, starting to be in every aspect. Um, she tries to, you know, get out of it and, like, lock her room and put furniture up against the door and everything. 
Um, and um, it just, it, it staves him off for a while, and then it doesn't. So she ends up getting raped by her father. Um, then she runs to her betrothed fiancé, and he doesn't want anything to do with her either. So not only is she betrayed by her father, but she's also betrayed by her... Um, love of her life. Her, yeah, the love of her life, her fiancé, the one that was going to rescue her out of that situation. Um, and then she's marked as a vampire shortly after that. So just like the different levels of betrayal that she has experienced by men in particular um, really leads her to this, this hate that really feeds into what she is doing and how she's ruling, um, especially when you have to live side by side with the humans. So, um, once again, going back to the quote, you know, of living your life with integrity, I, I find it really ironic that that's... Coming out of her mouth? Yeah, what she decides to say. Um, I think it's kind of cool, though, that like, she, like, steps out of herself. What do you mean? <clears throat> like... She's taking her past experiences and putting them aside in order to help others do the right thing. You know what I mean? Well, it's it, with Neverett, it's a do as I say, not do as I do. Right, and I absolutely hate that saying because monkey absolutely. see, monkey do. <laughs> yep. Especially as a higher priestess. Right, right. So people are going to see you. And I mean, like, it's all fine and dandy until people, like, actually do what you do. Right. And then it's a problem. Right. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Fuck it. (laughs) Like, right. Well, and as a mother, like, I didn't realize that I do some things until, like, you start doing them and you're like, oh my God, where did you get that? (laughs) And I'm like, no, you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What? No. I don't know, like, any, like, thing in particular that, like, I've seen you do and I'm like, oh, me next. (laughs) And you're like, no, don't do that. I'm like, but you do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had that kind of conversation. No. So. You're very good at like, okay, let's not do that. And I'm a great listener. And like, I, well, I do my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've always been that way though. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um... Okay, so a little bit of background history about this article. Um, I absolutely hate history. I actually took government classes in high school so that I wouldn't have to take any history classes because I love how much I hated history. I love. But in reading this article, I'm like, dude, like, so if they taught about like this stuff in history, I'd have been all about it. No, school history is to- to- like totally different. Like, you learn about like the wars and all that stuff, but you don't learn about anything like valuable. I guess, like, learning about the wars is valuable. I was like, mm. but like, <laughs> But, like, we need to learn stuff like this. Like, right. that the things that we think aren't happening here are indeed happening here. Right, right. And right. it's not just something that's like, oh, it's not happening because we live in a small state. Like, no, like, this is very much a serious thing that is happening all over the world. Right, right. And how it started in other countries, yeah. too. Like, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um... Okay, so a little bit of background history um, from this article, um, and the history will lead into the story. So just stay with me. I know it's going to seem like it sounds boring, but I promise it's not. So just stay with me, okay? So, um, and I am going to read a lot um, in this episode, so I apologize for looking down, and if you have the glare of my glasses, I apologize again, but um, all super important stuff, and I can't remember all of this stuff. <laughs> I got skills, but I don't know about that many skills. <laughs> I don't. So, <laughs> I had note cards for my presentations, and I, at the end, I just like, <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, know, for real. <laughs> um, okay. So the Meiji government industrialized the prostitution trade by systemizing female trafficking, business practices, and profits through expanding forms of prostitutes from brothel prostitutes and geisha and barmaids. They were all debt-bound servants who were sold to these enterprises by their poor families. Brothel owners traded women between brokers, traffickers, and other brothel owners for the brothel owner's benefit. More debt was incurred to these females for their training, clothing, and feeding to be paid off over time. So the first military comfort station was organized by the Japanese Navy in Shanghai during the first Shanghai incident in 1932, and the Japanese Army followed suit. 
establishing its comfort women system based on the Navy model. In the 1930s, selling one's daughter into prostitution by impoverished families was an accepted social norm. Then, under the state-sanctioned prostitution system, the police issued a prostitution license to a geisha apprentice. <laughs> Excuse me. At the time, she began to menstruate. Okay? So, that gives you a little bit of history as to what's going on in the world as this story now unfolds. Goes, you're kind of... Come here. Okay. Can you be a lady? Damn. <laughs> she is a lady. Well, she's showing her hoo ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to go into the story of Kikomaru. If I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, please correct me in the comments and leave me a phonetic spelling on how it's supposed to be said. <laughs> okay? Because, you know, born and raised Wyoming girl, some pronunciations don't come through. Okay, so on April 26, 1972, a 47-year-old Japanese woman was found dead in her small apartment in Chiba Prefecture near Tokyo. Her death was attributed to self-induced carbon monoxide asphyxiation. She left behind only 870 yen, which is equal to about $2.80 in U.S. dollars at that time. That's kind of a lot of money at that, like, back then. In 72? Oh, no, just kidding. That was only, like, 50 years ago. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, literally, like, like 50 years ago. Yeah. Yep. Because I was born in 81. So, like, that was (laughs) nine years before I was born. Like, that's not a whole lot. Um, and so she left that money in two suicide notes. Her name was Yamauchi Kaiko. Totally butchering that. I apologize. Um, but she was widely known by her geisha name, Kikamaru. Kikamaru was 10 when she was sold by her family to a geisha house. When she was 14, after starting her menses, she received a prostitution license since she was a geisha apprentice. At 16, she fled to a Salvation Army, which promoted the abolition of prostitution in Japan. She still had her family's debts to pay off, though. Um, the, mili- the Japanese military paid back her family's debts to her geisha house under the condition that she worked as a comfort woman for the Japanese military. So she was recruited. She Yay. joined proudly because she was serving for the nation. She spent two years between 1941 and 1943 working as a military prostitute at a Japanese naval comfort station in Truk Island. She was among the 33 elite women on Truk Island who were allocated to a single officer per day. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, the military never registered any comfort women as their employees. In post-war Japan, none of the comfort women were enshrined in the war shrine, nor granted a military pension by the government. Okay, so that's her, her story. What do you think about her story? I think it's kind of crazy that they were never, like, really, like, employees of the government. Even though they, she was literally, literally recruited. On the base. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that would be insane to, like, just think, like, yeah, no, like, I'm 100% serving my country in order for these men to be better. And then just finding out, like, oh, wait, like, I was just playing. Right. Not right. Nuggles. I think <laughs> up close and personal with Nuggles. You can see how shiny she is, though. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about Kikamaru's story, okay? Um, integrity, going back to the quote and, uh, you know, wrapping this up into the quote, do you feel like her integrity was given to her? In what way? So... She was ostracized um, her entire life. Yeah. Um, by choices that she didn't even make. Right. Right. So because she, she was off, sold. Right. Yeah. So she starts off by being sold at ten. Okay. Yeah. Let's start there. Yeah. Okay. So then she receives her prostitution license because that was what um, they did um, as as the state. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As soon as she starts to menstruate. Okay? At 14. Right. Okay? So then she becomes a geisha prostitute. Right. Okay? Then, 
Um, in order to get out of that, she agrees to sign on to okay. play a part, uh, like to do her part for the war for her country. Right. Okay. So then she signs on as a comfort woman, mm-hmm. and they literally paid off her family's debts. Right. Okay. So they recruited her. Then she gets out and she works. Um, later um, in the article, um, I totally don't have it with me, but. She works as, like, a few different things, and then she gets, like, this actress job, Um, but then she gets the actress job taken away from her because she ends up being thrown in jail for selling um, some items that, come to find out, were stolen, right? So um, she ends up going to jail, um, and she gets out, and she is totally shunned from society. So not only was she a child prostitute, But now she just went to jail. But now she just went to jail, right? So, like, literally everything. Oh, and then she was a brothel owner at at one point. I don't know what that means. She owned, like, a prostitution house. Oh, okay. Okay. So she was, like, uh, what do they call them here? Um, A madam. um, She was a madam. Okay, I was going to say, like, a... I know, like, okay, this is totally kind of off topic, but kind of on topic, like... In, in, like, strip clubs, like, they have, like, the moms. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so she was kind of like that. Yeah, so the madams um, are the one. Okay, so, like, in, like, the strip clubs, the moms are, like, the protectors and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so when you are a madam, like, you set up dates and, uh, like, you set up the dates. Like, you set up the appointments. Right. Like, that's what the madams do. So that's what she was doing. Okay. Right. Um, so then she was trying to get out of that, um, and, and did, um, and then she, so in one way, shape, or another, like, she was still involved in this trade. Right. Okay. So then she's trying to tell her story about, like, what went, like, what went on with, like, the Japanese government and stuff. And nobody is listening to her, and everybody's telling her, well, you just did it for the money. No, she was literally put in like this. <laughs> like she had no option. Right. But nobody right. cares about that second story. Nobody cares about that second story. So, um, her way out is suicide. Right. Okay. I mean. So, where was her integrity given? Now, before you answer that question, I do want to tell the audience... All of you barriers watching. What it do, baby? Um, that um, no matter what you feel about prostitution or any of these other things, like outside of these views or whatever, like we really want you to be open minded and really look at these stories from their perspective. Okay, so take out all of the moral questions out of and out of this discussion, one hundred and ten percent, because we're not talking about the morality of what's going on here. We are talking about the actual situation itself. And how it would have felt from Kikamaru's perspective. Point of view. Okay. So that being said, do you feel like her integrity was ever given to her? Absolutely not. Why? I don't think that she ever had a choice in like what she got to do and what she like she didn't have any say in what was going on in her own life. I think people were living through her, like her parents, because they sold her. Right. Like and they couldn't even fight their own battle with paying off their own debt so what about um when she's an adult i think that's all she knew so learning something different is hard and when you're shunned like that after coming out of jail like you don't know what to do so any money at that point is her whole two dollars and eighty cents yeah like mm-hmm. so i mean she did what she had felt like she needed to do right um, so part of overcoming trauma and maintaining integrity as being a whole person is that you have to have the chance to be able to tell your story. Yeah. And she was never, uh, she wasn't given that option. She I mean, was... she obviously had the option because she spoke to, um, the author of this article, right? Right. Um, but in her suicide note, if you read the suicide note that's listed in the article, she talks about, she says, tell my story however you want. So she had, like, 
I feel like if I were to ever leave a suicide note, like, I think there'd be certain things like, okay, I need this to be told to be able to really tell my story, and then I don't want this, and I need this and this and this told. Right. You know what I mean? Because you want to make sure that my name is... It's understood. Well, yeah, that, and I want my story to be understood, and I want my name to be understood, and I want to be able to leave, like, a a mark on what's going on. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not just going to leave and be like, well, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. no. Like, I still want my name to be remembered, and I want my name to leave a mark in this world in order, in ca- like, in case, like, something like this happens, like, my name needs to be known. Right. So, the fact that she was like, well, tell it however, do you feel like she received any integrity even after her death? Absolutely not. She yeah. was not given any of the credit and props um, that she deserved. I was like, dude, like, you didn't even give this reporter or author um, the ability to be like, okay, well, here's what I'm going to say. Right. Like, is this okay? Is, is yeah, this no, okay? She really did you know, not like, care. No, she really didn't. She was like, here it is. It's whatever. Yeah. Like. Dude. And I feel like at that point, and I feel like if you're... And she's 47. Yeah, like, I right? feel like if you already have a plan, though, like, because I'm thinking about it from a place that, like, I, like, suicide isn't on my mind, like, but I feel like if suicide was heavy on someone's mind, like, at that point, you just don't care. You just want out. Right. And so trying to think of it that way, like, I think if I were to be in her situation and I I think I would be like I don't care either right because nobody ever ever cared in the first place so why would they care now after I'm dead well and she literally talks about like right before she commits suicide where she's living um she hasn't been able to pay her rent for like a while I can't remember like if it's months or like a year but like it's a while Right. And so the people that are living with her, they're looking at her, like, whenever she comes out to, like, get food or whatever, and they're like... Ew. Yeah. And so, you know, she's like, where, where do I get to be a person? Right. When, when do I get to be a person? Look at how shiny she looks. When do, dude, that science diet is amazing. Yeah. Okay, but like... <laughs> go on. Oh, oh, you scared her. Um... Yeah, so I didn't drop my drink. She, um, it, yeah, so she doesn't get that integrity, like, and yeah. she is literally shunned everywhere she goes. Right, and I feel like I wouldn't want to live in, in a place like that either. No I just caught my knee. Um, you know, and she gets into these relationships that they treat her like garbage, um, and it's just it's horrible. So yeah, one hundred and ten percent read the full article because it is crazy. I kind of understand that like through. that, like. That being in relationship after trauma, like, that's all you know. Right. And so you're automatically drawn towards that because, oh, he's safe, but he's not. Right. Like, but he's what I know, so right. I'm staying safe. I understand that. I get that. Um, because I'm currently in that. Ooh, that got really deep. Uh, but, like, no, I, I really do get that. Yeah. Yeah. On a personal level, I do too. Yeah. You know, it's hard to change where you're from. Yeah. It can be done. Absolutely. 110%. There's lots of healing and lots of understanding what is actually going on. Lots of conversations. Well, yeah. You know, like lots of being real with yourself. Yeah. You know, kind it's of It's hard and it's not easy at all, but it, it is worth it. Right. Right. So, do you think her only way to have integrity was to take her own life because that was the only thing that was in her, her control. In her power. Yep. Yeah. That was the only thing that she was like, okay, yeah, like, I can do this. Right. Right. And at that point, like, with not having anybody by her side and not having anything at that point, like, I'd want something that I can be like, yeah, no, like, I have control of this. I chose this. Yeah. I got to choose this. This is I didn't mine. get to choose... My whole past, or yeah. the things I did, and the things that I did choose... Were taken away from me. Were totally violated. Yeah. Right? Um, so she had zero power her entire life. Right. And that was that was her way of like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm out. Yeah. 
I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would honestly probably do the same. Now, we are 100% not condoning suicide. Absolutely not. Suicide In any has, way, shape, or form. Suicide has kind of been a... It's not kind of... It is a huge deal in it's our a family. huge deal in our family. I mean, like, we all have semicolon tattoos. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I drew, <laughs> I drew mine. <laughs> you know? And, and my son has one on his hand as well. You know, like, we all have stories about it we have all attempted it um and we have had quite like numerous discussions about it Mm -hmm. um you know what got us there and we worked through you know what the things that got us there and how we continued on um even like the stories like that you have before i was even born like mm -hmm. we've talked about those Mm -hmm. yeah because it is a big deal and it is something to be talked about and if you are feeling anything like suicide please Reach out for help. Reach out for help. There's there's a adult. suicide hotline. We will be posting right now. Thank yeah. you, Anthony, so very much. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs> um, but no, you know, it is a various, very serious thing. They, there's even the text for the suicide line now, mm-hmm. so you don't even have to talk to anybody. You can just text. Um, I actually just lost a friend of mine to suicide um, last week, um, and she was only 13. Right, right. Just a baby. Yeah. Just a baby. You know, these, the problems, the problems are not permanent. No. So please, please, please do not find a permanent solution for True. a temporary Permanence. situation. Yeah. Please don't. But if you feel that that's where you are at, please call somebody. Anybody will pick up the phone. Okay. Um, so I want to talk a minute about the similarities between child sex workers and prostitutes that started as trafficked victims. Okay. Um, Wait, sorry. Can you... I tuned you out. I'm sorry. Can you say that? Yeah. So, the similarities between child sex workers... Okay. Right? Um, and prostitutes that started as trafficked victims. Okay. Right? So, um, there's no... There's not... I should have said that a different way. There are no child sex workers. No. Okay, there are trafficked sex workers. <laughs> yeah, children. 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 <laughs> okay, um, so that being said, what are the similarities of people with Kikamaru's past and the trafficked victims that we have in our world today? No idea. Okay. The similarities for me are that they don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are definitely like... Yeah, like catapulted, sold. This is not a life that they chose for themselves. Um, there was this one movie that I was watching, and I think we watched it together, and like they literally like were kidnapped and put on a train sent somewhere and I remember like they all stood in a line and like it, they're one of them was like a mother or daughter and the daughter ended up getting chosen and like the mother like fought these guys and like he was like no I'm taking her and she was like no you're not and then they gave the money and then the daughter left and she never saw her daughter again mm-hmm. and I don't remember what movie it was but I don't remember either but I mean it you know what I'm talking yeah, about vaguely remember and then yeah. they escaped and they were on the train yeah yeah and yeah. then they jumped the fence and went to the gas station yep yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Great movie. Yeah. If I find the title. Yeah, we will definitely list it. Yeah. Uh, we watch lots of movies like that because it's so fascinating. Uh, um, it's just the psychological aspect of it. Yeah. Because that's what we do when we watch movies. <laughs> yeah. No, like, the, I can't even, like, imagine the mind fuck that is in that while being trafficked. Right. And right. being a sex worker. like Right. We will talk about how to step into those shoes a little bit later. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's the similar, I think that's what we're missing is, um, that prostitutes, even adult prostitutes, you know, they may be in a situation where that's all they know because that's what they were doing when they were kids. They were forced into this position and it doesn't matter how they got there. You know, it doesn't matter if they were trafficked into that situation or if they left home because home was so hard that that thought that they thought this was the only way out. That that was their only way out, right? It that it doesn't matter how they got there. The fact is that they, that they got there, and this is what they know. Yeah, even like the ones that may have 
chosen it like they hate it like th that's not something that's just like oh like this is my dream job you know what i mean yeah <laughs> you're like <laughs> I, yeah, I can't imagine like, just like, I want to grow up to... and be a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's not just something that's like, like a child in kindergarten's like, I want to be a prostitute. You know what I mean? And understand what a prostitute is. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, how dangerous that is. It's super dangerous. Like, the infections and everything else that can come with it, and like, the possible trafficked mm -hmm. and the possible murder, mm -hmm. like, that can come with that is mm -hmm. just insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my heart goes out to and, this person. And, you know, like... And guys. And guys, too. Yeah, the guys. And they're, sometimes their fetishes, like, they get some craziness, right? Like, it's not... The, the, the amount of danger <laughs> that um, it, these girls are being put in yeah, is no. just <clears throat> indescribable indescribable yeah. um so yeah I, I think we just need to really understand that part of it yeah. um so when i was reading this article i was like oh man like you know this this happened like forever ago and in a whole ass other country right this thing this doesn't happen here this is not something that happens here so I got on and was looking and found this article um, that I mentioned. Um, and I'm just going to read the first part of this article to you because I believe I really want you guys to understand that this isn't something that just happened somewhere else. You know, we're not safe. <laughs> we're not safe. And we're in Wyoming, yeah. right? Um, you know, Casper has a population of what, like 63,000 people? Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere around there. Like um, you know, Cheyenne, when we left Cheyenne, they were like at 50 some thousand. But, but when I went back just like a few weekends ago, they were like 58. Okay. I mean, so Casper and Cheyenne are very close and Cheyenne probably has more of a danger than Casper does because they're so well, close to the Colorado, Colorado border. Right. And Cheyenne has the intersection of 80 and 25. And we have the base. So that is why there is so many like drug violations and they're always doing huge huge drug busts in Cheyenne like drug rings uh, I mean like huge yeah. <laughs> like pounds and pounds um, of drug usage because those are the highways that cross um, the United States and that's where they intersect is Cheyenne um, so this uh, article was was um, written by Jen Kotcher in January 27 2022 so this was like not even a year ago. Yeah. Right? So, like, I mean, like, just shy of a year. What was the month? January. January 27th. So. Almost a year. Almost a year. Yeah. October, November, December. Okay, so, like, nine months. Yeah. So, nine months ago. Okay. Um, so, both his mother and stepfather took Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, almost yeah, yeah. two years. Two years. Sorry. 22. We're in 23, and then. Um, this oh, January 23. Okay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, my heart hurts. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, so this is a recent article, the way you slice this. Yeah. Okay. So both his mother and stepfather took drugs and got in financial trouble with a motorcycle gang. To pay off their debts, his mother offered up Charlie, then eight years old. There's a myth that human trafficking victims are snatched from parking lots or off the streets by nefarious figures in dark bands with tinted windows. In reality, that myth couldn't be further from the truth, something Wyoming resident Charlie knows all too well. Charlie, who chose only to be identified by his first name and to keep his location in Wyoming confidential for the sake of protecting his identity, was just a boy when his parents began trafficking him. The situation is not unusual. According to a 2020 study by Polaris, a national nonprofit organization, 42% of human trafficking victims were trafficked by family members or caregivers, while another 39% were trafficked by an intimate partner or spouse. Charlie's abuse began before he was trafficked when he was assaulted by his paternal grandfather as a boy. When he brought it up to his father, he accused Charlie of lying and told him to never bring it up again. His mother also dissuaded Charlie from reporting the abuse to authorities. I remember distinctly what she said, Charlie told Cowboy State Daily. She told me that these things sometimes just happen, so I needed to get over it and not make a big deal out of it. By that point, Charlie was confused but took his parents' comments to heart. From there, it got worse. After his parents divorced, Charlie's mom married a man in a motorcycle gang. 
Both his mother and stepfather took drugs and at some point got in financial trouble with the gang. To pay off their debts, his mother offered up Charlie, then eight years old. He remembers making three separate trips to the motorcycle gang's clubhouse to six or seven of the gang members so that six or seven of the gang's members could have their way with the young boy in a back room. After three visits, the debt was paid off. Both the mother and stepfather were in the room when the abuse occurred. Not long after, Charlie's mom and new father once again got into trouble with the gang, but this time it was severe enough to force them to move to Las Vegas. Once there, his mom and stepfather split up, so Charlie was on his own with, the, with his mom and younger brother, who he believes was never abused. Meanwhile, his mom still had a bad drug addiction. To get her fixed, she would routinely go to Fremont Street on the Las Vegas ships to find a dealer, offering up Charlie as payment. He was also trafficked to pay their mortgage. By then, Charlie was 13, and his mother would have to pin his arms down to make him submit to the abuse. Finally, by 16, Charlie had had enough. I knew I needed to leave home, he said, because I was going to end up locked up in an, in an, in an insane asylum or worse. At that time, Charlie was in a relationship with an older woman who allowed him to move in with her. From there, he never looked back. At some point, his mom kicked drugs and turned her life around, eventually becoming an over-the-road trucker. His brother still lives with her and watches her pets when she's on the road. Charlie occasionally takes his mom's phone calls, though to date, she's never brought up the abuse or offered any apologies. Today, at 26, Charlie is happily married with his own business. Since running away from home, Charlie has had his own share of trouble, including an accident in the military that led to several serious medical issues. He was also sexually assaulted by a fellow soldier, which was his tipping point in his words, as all the repressed memories of his childhood came to an ugly head. He was struggling until someone recommended the excellent services of the VA hospital in Wyoming, so he moved to take advantage of those resources. It worked. He credits both the hospital and his wife for saving his life, though the scars remain. It's been hard to gain back a sense of safety or trust or power over my life once that occurred, he said. As part of his ongoing recovery, Charlie volunteers with two different nonprofit organizations to help runaways and those struggling with mental health issues. He is also working to raise awareness about human trafficking, leading him to share his story for the first time. The lesson he would like other victims to take from his struggle is that they're not alone and it's never too late to get help. In the meantime, he continues his journey to heal. At that point, he said he's gone from victim to survivor and would like to eventually become a thriver. I want to tell other survivors to have fun and enjoy their lives, but to be careful, he said. This doesn't define you, and there are resources to help. So, this isn't just in Japan. This isn't, it's 100% here too. you know, 1940s when wars are going on. No, no. This is a very real it's thing. An everyday thing. Everyday thing in every town, every city, um, every country. The uh, while I was doing some research for the state of Wyoming job that I have, um, it they were talking about the profitability of sex trafficking, and it is, I think, like three to four times. <laughs> Sorry, my demons are talking. <laughs> oh my um, god! The trafficking world is three to four times more profitable than the drug world. Okay, so which is a lot the of money. Drug world is <laughs> wealthy, right? And it's from many different countries. All over, many different countries: All Canada, over. Mexico, Colombia. You know, Russia for the opioids. You know, yeah. and you know, sort of the that it's... east. And I mean, like it, it literally. All the continents. Yeah. <laughs> so to think that it's three times more wealthy. More wealthy and more profitable than drugs. Is mind-blowing. <sighs> yeah, to just get, just, just wrap your mind around drugs. Okay? I don't know if you use them. I don't know if you've ever used them. I don't know if you've ever bought them. Um, but they are expensive. 
okay? Drugs are expensive. No matter what kind you're doing. If you're doing Delta 8 to... I'm so um, proud of you. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> you know, whether you're doing, you know, like nicotine or vaping or cigarettes to Delta 8 to weed to flour to dabs to opium to meth to fentanyl to coke i mean all of the things like everything is expensive so i know okay so when i w- was my pastor vaping like i know i went to go get some pods and i like how much are pods how much are pods okay now? so um well <laughs> depends on what kind of pods okay um so like the ones that i was using like i bought a four pack and they're they're super tiny Okay. Um, and I dropped like forty bucks. Okay. Okay. So two packs. And how long, how long does that last? That could that used to last me about like a week. Four pods in a week. No, like okay. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't no, understand. No, 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 no. You're right. Because I would do. Okay, so no, it would last me about two weeks. Because I can do a pod a week. I used okay. to do a pod a week. Okay. So uh, well, no. Two pods in a week. Okay. So then the other two pods would last me the next week. Okay. So I was spending so forty dollars every two, two weeks. weeks. Okay. Okay. So but there was one time like I bought four packs. So what is that? Eighty put one sixty. Uh huh. For four weeks. Right. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's like... And I didn't... And I That's just, like two cell phone bills. Yeah, no, and I was 100% <laughs> like, I wasn't paying my rent at that point. I right. wasn't paying my phone at that point. I was literally putting off everything else so I could feed my addiction. Right, right. Addictions are expensive. So... So if you can't afford your addiction, don't have an addiction. Right. Okay, I know that's totally easier than said than done. Absolutely, but like, 110%. If you know you're not going to be able to afford it in the future... Try to stay away from it. And there are state resources that help you get off of certain substances. Absolutely. So look into those, please. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, 100, 100, okay, no, no, no. What yeah, did you no, say? 80, um, $80 a month? Yes. Okay. So $80 a month for just vape. Yeah. I was also doing a lot of other things at that point. Okay. So that's not including weed or alcohol or any of the harder stuff so we're starting at $80 a month and like at that point I was popping pills I was drinking I was doing a lot of shit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um luckily we're out of that okay so (laughs) say um say we're gonna quadruple that was that 360 bucks a month yep okay so, if you do three to four times that, mm-hmm. that's the rate of a going month. So, do um, 80 times 12. 80 times 12? Yeah. <laughs> I need my phone for this. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so 80 times 12. 960. Nine, 960. Yep. 960. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I was spending about a grand in just pods a year. Do you know how much groceries that is? <laughs> like, Do you know how many? Like, okay, so divide that um, by two. Four eighty. I think I did that wrong. Was it nine sixty? Um, divide by two hundred. There we go. That is four months of rent. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's insane. Yep. Okay, so nine sixty. And then we, so I said three to four times the drug world, right? Yep. So let's go with three on the low side. Okay. Yeah. 2,880. Mm-hmm. And that's the low side. That's that's a, that's like the way low side. Can we totally throw pops, props to Tavia because she did that math in her head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about? I got a calculator right here on my phone. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's a. Uh, I love how Charlie's story, he was given the integrity to do, to tell his story. 
He was given the integrity of being able to have a support system to get through those moments. And then right? created his... And created his own story. Yeah, and like was able to be like, okay, I am strong enough to help others yes. out of this. Yes. Yep. Yep. And uh, speaking from experience, working as a CASA worker, because I was in out-of-home placement, that's traumatic in itself. Yeah. Um, I Because you're basically you, reliving you, your every shit. Time every you time you go through a case. Yeah. <laughs> you're literally reliving your I know, shit. I like, your last case was really <laughs> hard because I know, like, baby girl, like, she was basically going through the same thing that you were. Yeah. And, like, I remember you were like, this is the last case I can do. Yeah. Because... It hit so close. It to home. did. I, I actually got back into counseling because I, not only because no, but it, of my case. Um, but I mean that really hit home. I had to really. I thought I was like, man, I'm totally good. Like I'm totally fine. I can totally do this. And then I was just like, oh my god, I can't do this. Because I know you had like two cases in total. I had three. Three. I had three. Right, but your this first, but your second, <laughs> your second one was super short. Yeah, my second one was super short. But mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. like you're. My first, and I, I was really mad at my first one because my first one should have been longer, and I feel and they like they just, case. like, threw her back, and they're like, no, nah, nah, she's good. Yeah. And I'm like, no, she's not. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, oh, my God. And then your third one actually aged out. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, yeah. I say we, like, I was in there as well, but, like, me and you have to listen to me cry. <laughs> you know, we definitely had numerous talks about, like, what was going on. Yeah. And so, like, we definitely, like, helped as much as we could. Mm-hmm. But at that point, it was up to the system. Right. Yeah. I I mean, I... And the system really fucked her over. Yeah. Yeah. And the system fucked you over. And I think yeah. that's what kind of just, like... Yeah. It was just... It was just an additional... It was an additional trauma from the state mm-hmm. for me. Um, and that wasn't even yours. That wasn't even mine. Yeah, it no, really like, was it. Poor baby girl has to live with this. <laughs> right, right. And um, we have. I'm totally not crying, but I have. I have a. It's just so sad, and it is really sad. <laughs> I thought you were seriously crying. Uh, no, no, no. I was no. like, do we need to pause? No, I have. Like, no, I see I, it. It's, it's right here. Okay. Oh my oh. god. Okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I got it. Uh, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Yeah, I, um, it was, it was hard for me because I was like, man, like, you, you guys are seriously still fucking people. That's still. great. That's great. And That's you so nice of, to know. You got out of the system, what, like, 30 years ago? Yeah. Ish. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Okay, 30 years later. <laughs> That's a lot of growth. And I was like, man, like, things really changed and I'm super excited and they got some good things in place. And then I was like. Yeah, you're no. still fucking kids. Yeah, That's no. great. Like, like I, thirty I'm years so later, mad. you were still fucking up kids' life. Yeah, and then they wonder, like, why is your suicide rate so high? <laughs> yeah, maybe fix something. Yeah, you cannot keep doing Can the we same be a little bit more supportive? variables and expecting different results. Yeah, yeah. So that one really hit hard. Yeah, you know. Um, so the the ability for him to go back and help others that are in that situation. Um, Speaks a lot. Big shout out to Baby Girl if you're watching this. I love you. Love you. So much. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, kudos, kudos to him for being able to. That takes a lot of strength and a lot of healing, resiliency. Yeah. Like, and just being like, okay, I understand what you went through because I also went through this. Mm -hmm. Let's get through this together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know what you're going through and genuinely know what that means and be truthful about that yeah and like this is gonna make me sound really wrong but like if i would have gone through this then i would have been like i understand what you're going through this so let's do it together because i had to do it alone mm-hmm. i don't want you to go through the same thing let's right. do this together right right yeah because being alone is in the, anything in any situation <laughs> i don't even like sleeping alone like now that i like have someone to sleep next to every night. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even like sleeping by myself. Right. So, like, being alone is a scary thing, but also can be a great thing. Mm-hmm. You just have to learn how to be okay with being alone in your own presence. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, do you feel like, from the time frame between Kikumaru and Charlie, that we are doing a better job in giving people their integrity to tell their story? I think it all depends on how their story ends. 
ends. What do you mean? Um, because like elaborate on that. Because okay, so Charlie's <laughs> story is not over. Absolutely. He, he's still he's still he's doing the damn still thing. Still doing the damn thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Kika Maru, unfortunately, her story did end. Right. Right. She's not doing it anymore. No. And I mean, like, okay, not good for her for committing suicide because. I really wish that she would have lived to tell her own story. I feel like it would be more well received. Now. Yeah, um, but a hundred percent. I think that we are we are doing better with giving them their own integrity, but I think we could still have some growth. Absolutely, there is always room for growth. Yeah, one hundred and ten percent for sure. For sure, I have the hiccups. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, so what about being able to live full lives like Neferet says in the quote? Okay, so, um, I actually have a story that goes with this. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so, um, one of my old best friend's sister just passed away last week. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Two Dude, weeks ago. You, you've had some, you've had some situations come up the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so, her name was Kenzie. Okay. Um, she was 15. Um, and she did not commit suicide. Um, she actually passed away of natural causes. Um, her heart stopped because she already had a heart condition before. It wasn't natural causes. It was, it was a health issue. Well, yeah, but. Because that's not natural. Well, I mean, like, you know what I mean. (laughs) Okay. Um, but she did know she had a heart condition before they unfortunately just caught it too late. Right. Right, right, right. Um. Big shout out to the Denver Children's Hospital. Yes. Um. So, she had rules on her front on her like her bedroom door that she lived by every day and one of them was if life gives you lemons make lemonade okay and the other one was live every day like it's your last because it might be right unfortunately that was her last day right um and so ever since i went to the funeral that's been a huge thing for me i it's been a huge thing for our family in general yeah um because i I mean, like, we haven't had a lot of death in our family, no. um, and I'm very fortunate for that, um, but there is always that what if. Right. And there's a song by Neo, I think you posted it. Yeah, and it's, I, it's actually... Post it. It's, it will be on here at some point. It's on the Facebook page. Yes. <laughs> um, and it, literally, one of the lyrics is, I can't promise tomorrow, but I promise tonight. Right. That is a huge thing. Because you can never promise tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to quote Shauna. Yeah. The, <laughs> when we recorded, that's the first time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the devil is what promises tomorrow. Right. God, God only promises, promises today. Today. Right now. Yep. 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 And it's true. You know, like, we make it a huge deal in our family to, no matter how bad we're arguing, like, we could storm out the door Slam and not the door say anything, and then we come back and be like, I love, love you, fuck face. Okay, bye. And then we leave. <laughs> and, okay, so, uh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. I, gotta say I, I just think that, like, that, that is how we make sure that no matter what happens or what kind of situation that we may come into or whatever may happen, that that's how we know that if we never get the chance to come back, that we're set. Yeah. We're good. Because... I said I love you. I said I love saying you. something hateful. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to be completely honest, like, with Ma- uh, with Kenzie, I was not very nice to her the last time I talked to her, and mm-hmm. that is a regret of mine, mm-hmm. um, because I unfortunately never got to you talk to her. You guys were fighting. We were fighting, and there was some drama going on, and I found out some stuff that happened behind my back, and so... I was mad, and I, I wasn't very nice, and I'm not going to say it was completely my fault, because it wasn't completely my fault either. Right, right, um, yeah. But I regret saying this, the stuff that I said to her, because I no longer got to take that stuff back. Right. That was the last thing she heard from me. Right. You know what I mean? But going back to saying, like, I love you, like, I was get we were getting ready to move to Seattle. <clears throat> uh-huh. And I went over to Cody's house, and... <laughs> Our rings. <thank> yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> And I went over to Cody's house, and I gave um, Randy a letter, and I gave Cody a letter. Mm -hmm. And Cody read his. Randy didn't even open his. He saw me sitting in the smoke shack and was like, Esperanza. And I was like, fuck, I fucked up. Why did I stay here? Like, I just wanted to see that they got the envelopes. Um, And he came in. He was like, 
this is not goodbye. I was like, what do you mean? I have no idea if I'm even going to be, like, moving back. I could be there for the rest of my life. Right, yeah, you don't know. Yeah, like, this may be goodbye. Right. He was like, no, this is see you later. Yeah. And I was like... We definitely had a plan to stay there. Yeah, no, we definitely did. We stayed there for a whole 31 days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were like... Well, I remember, like, we were driving around trying to find an apartment at that point, and we were trying to decide if we were going to stay in an apartment... Or if you're going to get a long stay hotel. Yeah. And yeah. I remember we stopped at a pizza place and I saw this crackhead um, mm. licking the window. And I was like, Mommy, like, I want to go home. I'm and then the guy came home. in and was like dancing in the plaza. Yeah. Like by himself. And then was stumbling everywhere. Yeah. No, and I remember looking at you and I was like, I want to go home. And, and we both just then cried. we both cried. <laughs> <laughs> we should have gone home that instant. We should have gone home. You know, like, pack your shit up. Let's go. Yeah. Like, you got snuggles in the car. Let's go. Yeah. We should have gone home. But we needed to live that experience in order to grow. Yeah, I think that was a very, very, very good growing experience for us. For me and you. As I think as our relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was yeah, a great yeah. thing for us. Individually, Not however. so much for anything else that would go on. Yeah, no, because I, I remember I tried to commit suicide in Seattle. Yeah. Um, I got into a really bad fight with my boyfriend at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no friends in Seattle. I had one friend who would text me every day, and we unfortunately never got to meet. Right. Um, I was doing school online. I was passing all my grades because I already learned everything. Right, yeah. Um, I was refusing classes mm-hmm. um, because I already learned it, so I don't need it. Right. Um, the only time we would go out is after I got off of work, or you'd come to work with me. And we would go to Safeway. And we'd go to Safeways, Walmart. or we'd go to Walmart. And then that was better. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I mean, I remember, like, Halloween, we went downtown. Yeah, we did. And we, we did, did pictures. We did but pictures You Halloween. know what I mean? Like, we were out for 30 minutes. Yeah, because then all the crazies started coming, and then the poor boys, like, started yeah. coming into the plaza, and then they were starting drama, and I was like... Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, 30 <laughs> minutes out and about in a month. Right. Yeah. That's a big deal. Right. And, I mean, we were, like, what, two blocks away from the... Well, no, we also went to go explore downtown. And then, remember, we lost Ruby? Because I was like, oh, my God, I lost my car. Oh, Where's yeah. my car? <laughs> yeah, no, okay, so, okay, what was that, like, an hour? <laughs> yeah, we were there for, like, an hour. <laughs> yeah, okay, so an hour and 30 minutes in a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, we were not. And I wasn't allowed to go outside by myself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to even go to the car. Because we were literally like... Downtown Seattle. Yeah, Capitol Hill, downtown Seattle. Um, There were bus stops where all the crackheads would be. And we were like down the street from the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we had to walk like, what was it, like five or six blocks to our car. Yeah, to the parking, to the parking lot. And there was like needles on the ground. Yeah, no, that was the first time I ever saw that. And I was like... Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean there's needles yeah. all around? And I'm like, don't touch the camera. Let's just go. Let's just be like, just I'm like, look like. at it. <laughs> <laughs> there's like specks on it. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Totally uncultured. But you know what I mean? Like, I needed to learn that thing. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot about, like, the LGBTQ, too. Right. Right. Um, yeah. We had my, quite, quite the conversations views, about those. And our views on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a lot that I learned there, but I was definitely... It was not something meant to be permanent. Right. Yeah. I think it was definitely an experience that we needed to have, and then that was that was it. That was all. That's all I needed. That's yeah. all I want. That was it. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I I truly believe that um, living those full lives every day is is vital. You know, yeah. there are days that I literally literally just pass out because I'm so exhausted because I am going 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 running 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 doing all the things. Just in case. Just yeah. in case, you know. Um, so I wanted to end um, this episode on a good note. So um, on the bottom of that article um, listed that I just read you about Charlie's story. Excuse me, about Charlie's story. It talks about uh, Miss Terry Markham. Um, and she's the co-founder and co-director of Uprising Wyoming. Um, and this is a nonprofit organization that's based out of Sheridan uh, that focuses... Um, on human trafficking. Um, she has been training law enforcement officers and frontline professionals about human trafficking and even staging sting operations, um, such as one in Sweetwater County that led to the arrest of a former, former, I'm sorry, of a former legislature on charges of solicitation. 
Um, do you know what that means? No, not a thing. He was um, asking to pay for sex. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that um, process that I, I wanted to... I don't understand that. <laughs> I really don't. You know? Um, so, this is a totally what I wanted to come talk to you about. So, they have this. Um, I have attended a couple of trainings with her. I... Uh, work for the state of Wyoming at the Guardian Ed Lightum, the Wyoming Guardian Ed Lightum, um program, and um, as a peer support specialist, and so I've gone to their trainings that they have I had go to the one. last couple of years, um, and it's the Wyoming Joint Children's Symposium, um, and last year it was in Laramie, and she's a speaker there, and she is like so tall, but she is a force to be reckoned with. She is amazing. Um, and she has these VR goggles that you put on. I couldn't do it. And, um, you get to live, you get to get the experience of, um. As if you were one of them. As if you were a trafficked victim. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you like, you know, go into like with in the room with a John. That's not what I'm saying. So what happens is, is you're in this room and you have your items like you're in a bedroom, right? And you have your items around you. So you can look around the room. You can see kind of like what's going on and you can hear people walking down the hallway. You don't know if they're coming to your room. You don't like you can hear what they're saying, um, but you don't know like, okay, is this the moment they're going to come get me? Um, like what's going on? So just being immersed in that situation. You'd be terrified. Fucking a, dude. There's, there's no way you could walk out of that situation and have nothing but sympathy for these girls. Yeah, and boys. And and boys, because it definitely happens to boys. Yes. A- absolutely, as we we saw with Charlie. According to Charlie. You know, um, and uh, so that is something that she can actually bring to your school or whatever organization that you can do. You can sign up for that. That'd be good for Kato. Um, I think it'd be good for every, every teenager. So I was totally going to ask you, Do have you heard about any trafficking? Like you just got out of high school. Um, you're... You know, it's still within that age range that you still could be trafficked now. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so have you heard of any situations that even come close to this? Um, so I knew one girl, and she was a foreign exchange student, and back home she was trafficked. She was trafficked? Yeah, she was trafficked. Okay. Um, and she got out by coming to America and going to school. Um, and, like, we never, like, we had that conversation and like I was very dumbfounded, I guess. Like, so I thought I I think I misunderstood the story because I thought she was from a family who was doing the trafficking. No, so she, well, kind of. Okay, so she was trafficked, and okay, she saw the trafficking. Okay, okay, so um, she got out of that by coming to Casper and mm-hmm. or Wyoming, damn, um, and mm-hmm. um, going to school. Um, so we had that conversation and I was just dumbfounded, like, oh my God, like, this is a real thing. This is not something that is just happening in movies. Mm -hmm. This is not something that is just make-believe. This is 100% real. Right. And I didn't know what to say. And obviously, like, the teachers knew, um, because they accepted her into the school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, we never had a conversation after that. I just felt very blessed that she was safe like she felt safe to, safe enough to be able to tell me her story and I'm mean, like we didn't talk ever after that I was very like much of a simple wave in the hallway mm-hmm. and then that was about it and then I haven't seen her since right but I was graduated out when she was a year younger than me right okay but right. that's the only, so it's like, real it's, it's real it's real it's here yeah it's everywhere yeah um yeah I just don't want any of our viewers to just say oh well that couldn't happen in my town <laughs> Because it does. It does. It does. One hundred and ten percent. Whether you know it or not, it does. It does. And whether you accept to believe it. Yeah. Like, it's happening. Yeah. You know? You this, can't just avoid it. Um, what is that movie? Um, the Sound of Freedom. Yeah. Right? Um, you know that? I think It's that, a great movie. I think it literally brought the issue into everybody's living room. And so now it's at the forefront. And I think I think we can do some Because I remember, like, when I was younger, like, sex trafficking and everything like that was very hush-hush. Right. Like, you don't talk about it. If you experienced it, you kept it in your mind and you never said it out loud. But now, 
I think I But was, once again, the integrity of the story and healing, like, yeah. you have to get that out at some yeah. way. And I think ever since it started to come to the forefront, like, a lot of people have healed, and it's really opened a lot of people's eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, shit, no, this is a thing. Mm-hmm. And this is a big thing. Yeah. This isn't just like, oh, well, well, it happens every once in a while. Yeah, no, like, this is happening every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and for years upon years for yeah. some people. It's not just a, a one-time thing. Yeah, no. This is, this is this a is continual their life. thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Uprising uh, Wyoming also holds a GRIT conference. Um, and it's called GRIT, um, the Greater Rockies Immersive Training on Exploitation and Trafficking. Um, they hold a conference every year. Uh, we did miss the ones for, uh, 2023. Um, 2024 is May 6th through 8th, um, in Laramie, Wyoming. So, um, if you go to the Uprising website, which Anthony will post for you, um, it's also going to be listed in the show notes. Um, you can register for there. You can also sign up on their website for any updates so you can get their newsletter. Um, and please, please, please support your local agencies in fighting this fight. This is a big fight that takes multiple agencies, um, numerous agencies to come together and uh, really team up to provide all the supports that everybody needs for those people that are coming out of this um, out of this life. So um, as a wrap up, um, thank you for joining us. Um, I, I also want to say that I do 110% agree with this quote. Yes. Even though Neferet was the one that said it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Even though she's crazy and we don't really agree with her, but I do 110% agree with this quote. So I think it's a great quote, and I think, I think it's, it's an amazing that we quote. Through every yep. day. Yep, yep, yep. I, I definitely do not agree with regrets. I don't have um, any, I think I have one regret. Um, and he passed away suddenly, so I didn't get to finish up that chance. But um that is probably the one oh, that killed regret me. Oh, <laughs> um, that killed me that i i really have but outside of that i wouldn't change anything else um yeah. as as you know crazy and all of the numerous experiences that i've experienced in my life that i wouldn't change anything um, i think everything and every choice that we make every day depends on like not depends but determines where our life is going absolutely and so without with we have changing, a path with changing one single decision. Like a choose your own adventure book. <laughs> yeah, it, without, with changing one decision can change your entire life. Literally. Literally. And it can be anywhere from what do you eat to breakfast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It can it change really can. everything. It really can. Um, so, uh, also want to thank Justin Bragg as our sponsor. Woo. We always want to thank him every episode because he's amazing and totally does so much more than he realizes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for us, so um, we are finished with Mart. Um, I thought we had one more. I, I totally thought we did, but I, I see my note. I am we're finished with Mart. God oh, damn it, Mobby, Mobby. I'm sorry, I did not have I did not have my shit together. I apologize. So we will Whatever. be doing the first quote of Betrayed. Did you um, write the quote in? I did. Where we will be talking about crying being weak. Do you agree or disagree? Being weak. I think it depends on the situation. That's great. We'll have that conversation next episode. Cool. See you then. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I was excited. I know. It's going to be a great conversation. Um, Shauna is joining us for that one. So, um, Can we have a besties? A really big, yeah, we can totally do besties. Yes, yes, yes. I am down. <laughs> So, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, email or messages on YouTube, always, as always, um, go follow us on our socials. We have Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, email, email. Yep. Good job. (laughs) What else is there? So many things. And apparently we have TikToks coming, so there's that. Yes, we do have TikToks coming. Um, So, big shout out to Anthony for hooking us up with that um, and working on that for us. Um... Facebook, you will get lots of behind the scenes looks, um, videos that go along with. Um, Woo! I uh, got cold. Sorry. <laughs> videos that go along um, with the podcast. We don't put videos into our um, episodes uh, for copyright reasons, but they are on Facebook, so you can see what videos we want to include in these. 
Um, My hair looks fabulous. If you, I know. It looks great with this lighting and stuff. Um, Thanks. So if you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up. <laughs> we do love all of the mentions. Please um, share all of these episodes. We are hitting quite a crowd. Um, we just hit a milestone where we hit... 580, or 483. Yeah, a crazy amount of people. So the weed is definitely that getting out. That viewer page in the last 10 days. In the last 7 days. It seven? was the last 7 days. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. um, yes, thank you everyone for liking and sharing and, and coming back. So, please send us a message. Tell us what you love. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We're always up for constructive criticism. We will talk about that in a future episode too. So, <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh my god. And, oh my. <laughs> that was my Jesus. hope <laughs> I swear you're going to fall apart right on camera one of these days. I just know. <laughs> this fucking lips flying. Looking like fucking Iron Man. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. We appreciate it. So have a good day, Kay. Goodbye. Bye.